Okay, I'm going to do just a few quick things in this video, uh, mainly resizing the stage and getting this to fit on there perfectly, and then also uh, showing you how to adjust vectors inside of Animate. Uh, so the first part, let's get the stage set up in a better way. Uh, whenever I go over here in my properties panel, I can see where it's 360 by 360. Uh, that's by just clicking on nothing and it will show you what your stage size is. With this, I have these white edges here so I know that my animation isn't fitting on there. So I'm going to highlight this edge to, to see what my tallest part of my shape is. And I can see over here in the properties area where it says 275. So this is going to be 275 pixels tall. I'm going to go click on my background again, and then I'm going to leave the width the way it is, and then I'm going to go to my height, and I'm going to change that to 275. If you can't find your properties panel, it should be in Window and Under Properties. Okay, next part, I'm going to edit multiple frames. This is where it's kind of tricky, but uh, all you have to do is click on this Edit Multiple Frames button in your timeline. And once you have that clicked, uh, this these brackets appear. With the brackets, you just want to put them at the begin and the end of any of the places that you want to edit. So for us, we're going to bring it to the beginning and then the very end. Next part, I want to anchor these markers because sometimes you can click on things and then they'll disappear. So I'm going to click on this button right next to Edit Multiple Frames, and then I'm going to click on Anchor Markers. Okay, now I'm ready to select multiple frames and move them. So I'm going to use my black selection tool. I'm going to click up here in the upper left-hand corner and hold Shift, and then I'm going to click in the lower right-hand corner. It should highlight everything. And then I'm just going to drag this up. And I'm going to use my arrow keys to kind of do minor adjustments. I just don't want to see any part of the white edge. Okay, uh, this is looking pretty good. I might want to move it, nudge it over one pixel to the right. So I'm going to highlight these again. I'm going to hold shift and then click this lower right area. I'm just going to nudge it over once. And then that looks like it's good. Now, before I can edit anything else, I have to uncheck Edit Multiple Frames, and then I can get back to business. Now, this next part is editing vectors inside of Animate, and it's pretty easy. Uh, what's happening here is we need to edit these vectors so then we don't see this gap that appears. So this is always why you typically will add on extra to anything that you do just in case some overlap happens. So with this, uh, first thing I want to do is uh, animation's a little strange in the way that the way that he's breathing it, it kind of goes in a circle almost. Like it's... I'll change it to be more kind of a vertical breathing type of situation. So first of all, I want to right click and remove that classic tween. I'm just going to work with uh, this keyframe over here so I can get rid of these. I'm going to hold shift and click at the end, right click and remove these frames. I'm going to move this all the way to the end. Uh, I can move this just by holding control and then clicking on that and then dragging it to the very end. And now I have my keyframe that I can work with. Uh, I'm going to lock down everything besides that jacket layer. And, you know, while I'm here, I can also kind of fix up these little parts of his jacket there. There's these tiny little gaps that appear, and uh, they may appear later as well. Okay, so to edit this piece, uh, right now it's not editable because it's set as one kind of solid symbol. Uh, you can tell that because it's got this blue outline around it. Uh, what I want to do is break it apart, and I can do that by right-clicking on it and then going to break apart. 
And this should be all that we need to break it apart into, because now it has each one of those pieces has split up. And the next part, by dragging some of these vectors, I can highlight these individually and move them if I wanted to. But if I wanted to adjust the anchors of them, I can click on the edge of the shape. So whenever you're hovering over a shape and then you see a black box in the corner of your white arrow tool, that means that you'll be able to adjust the anchor points. So I'm going to take that, I can adjust these. And you know, here's a point where overlapping is fine because these are you know, nearly the same color. Uh, I would just do it so then there's no strange little gaps. Okay, so to adjust that, I need to highlight over a corner where I can see that black box, and then I'm going to click and adjust it. Okay. You can also adjust the order that they're in. I might want to bring this piece to the top so then it covers over that part of the darkness. So I'm going to right click on that and then go to arrange and then bring to front and then that should appear above it. Now these are the little gaps I was talking about that can be a little strange. Might be kind of tricky highlighting the thing that you want, though. Okay, and then the last part that we're going to work on is just doing a basic breathing tween. I could, you know, do the rest of these, but just for the sake of time, we're just going to do a quick classic breathing tween. So I'm going to back up a little bit. And then on this jacket layer, I'm going to right click on it and create a classic tween. Then at the end, I'm going to hit insert keyframe. This is just so anything that I do in between the beginning and the end, uh, he'll have his breathing animations, but I know at the very end, it'll be at the exact same position as it is in the beginning. So just for instance, we can move this anywhere we wanted to and then at the end it always go back to that same spot so I'm gonna undo those parts and with this breathing animation uh, before it was kind of like working on angle with this I'm just gonna make it a vertical movement so just as straight up and down as I can That might even be like too much. Now there it's kind of going at an angle again, so let me fix that. Okay, so that's less weird. And then here I can bring this down again. I guess if I wanted to get fancy, I could just uh, right click on some of these frames and keep it consistent. So I can right click on that first keyframe, copy it, and then that's 60 frames in, right click and paste. I'm going to remove this other keyframe that we made or right click and clear keyframe. 
And then I can right click and copy this frame, then go to 90 and copy and paste that in this spot. So now it's all pretty consistent. Uh, let me right click and copy this one. I guess of this part, I'm going to have to split the difference a little because... This is going up here, then down, then up, and then needs to go down and end in that spot. So I think might even spread these out a little bit. That way I don't have to make a quick breathing part there. We'll just make it all consistent. So if I want to adjust that, I can just change my keyframes uh, position by clicking on them and dragging them. So I'm just trying to make this look even throw out. Right now I'm just eyeballing it, but there's probably some math that you could do to make it work perfectly. But that seems to work so far. Anyway, uh, last thing. I'm going to lock down everything except for the background. I noticed that the background had these gaps in there as well. So, uh, same thing that you did with his jacket you could do with uh, these background pieces. Right now I didn't have to break it apart because they're already individualized so uh, makes it a little bit easier but just giving yourself some extra leeway to work with some of these pieces is a good idea. So uh, that's it. I hope this helps, and uh, let me know if there's anything else.